So we're ready to go, and I'll turn the time over to Ed Motola for the advanced tips and tricks of accounts payable for today. So um, let's go ahead and start the session, and I can see you just fine. Oh, it is going? Yes. Well, welcome. We're going to have a few interruptions, I'm sure, because there's about 25 people that are supposed to be here, and we don't see more than about a half dozen right now, so um, people will trickle in. Um, over the last few years, we've presented various levels of lunch and learns for payables, and of course every year we add more clients. And as I look around the room, I don't recognize a whole lot of people, so this seminar was designed to build on some of those previous ones. We've done general payables tips and tricks, and then last year we did a beyond basic payables tips and tricks, building on that knowledge, and this year we're trying to take it to the next level. Um, advanced tips and tricks. So there's some knowledge presumption from those. Anybody who wants the syllabus from those previous classes, let me know at the end and we'll, um, we'll forward those to you so you have some idea where to navigate and what to look at. But even if you haven't done those, this will be an eye opener and hopefully to some of the things you need to do. Um, does everybody have one of these now? Good. I put at the very beginning of the list month's end verification because that's really what it's all about. If you can't get a month's end to tie out, then we're doing something wrong along the way. So we're going to start with the hardest subject and then work our way back to some of the other tips and tricks that uh, help you to do your data entry better, your daily routines better, and to set up the system better. And then we'll, if we get time, we'll get down to 1099, which is really a year-end process. And there's a lot of things involved with that. So, um, If you haven't muted your phones yet, like me, now's a good time to do that. You don't want those interruptions. Remember to sit there. All right. Larry, could you turn off the overhead? Appreciate it. It's right around the corner there. Now, if you see the room go suddenly dark, that's because when the semis go over the spaghetti bowl overpass, they cast a shadow at certain times of day, and so <laughs> suddenly the sky lights go dark for a moment. Don't worry, they're far off. It just depends on the angle of the sun. All right, I'm using the Fabricam data in Great Plains, and I set this up. I've um, been playing with it all morning because I have a fresh install. And Fabricam is a sample company. And as with a lot of sample data, it doesn't balance. Um, if I go to my financial series, and I go to my inquiry summary, and I pull up my account payable account, the balance right now, come on in, ladies. Hi, Yenda, how are you? Good. You can take a handout right there and slide on in. The balance, uh, and this is in the year 2017, they've got this data well in the future. Um, this is the first open year. The balance uh, at April is the 1284-292-86. Okay, that's what the balance in the accounts payable should be in the accounts payable subledger, and it doesn't tie. And so I haven't had a chance to try to figure out why yet, but maybe we'll get to discover that. The first step on all the lists, though, before you even begin to look at the balances, is to make sure everything's high, uh, that everything's been posted. Because you can post in accounts payable to the GL, but not necessarily through the GL. So things may be posted in accounts payable, but land at the GL waiting to be posted. That happens for various reasons. Your posting setups may be set to post to, not through or you've done a transaction on the fly, what we call a transaction level posting, those never post through the GL. Avoid entry is an example of a transaction level posting. Even though the setup says to post through, the fact that they have no batch means that they can only post to the GL, not through. Let me back up for just a quick moment to show you a screen that many of you have not seen and hopefully will never see because it's outside of your purview. But in the posting setups, we have these controls. 
And in the purchasing series, for a payable transaction entry, I am posting to the GL. That means I'm integrated. And I'm posting through. That means when I post an invoice, it's going to post into payables. It's going to go to the GL, and it's going to post at the GL level. If I turn this off, it would post to the GL and be waiting there as a batch to be posted. Therefore, they'd be out of balance at this time. Plus, I'm going from transaction, not batch. So if the date came from the batch, the batch date would override it. I'm going from the transaction level. So whatever my invoice has, that's what it's going to hit at the GL level. Um, if you're using batch dates, fine. Then everything hits the batch date and goes to the GL as you have on your batch date. It overrides the transaction date in payables. And therefore, we have GL posting dates and, and payable posting dates. And when we reconcile, we'll want to be sure that we're looking at the GL posting date. But even if you have batch turned on, there are transaction level postings over here. Or there are whole windows that only do transaction level posting. They don't have a batch. So the transaction date's going to rule. Um, so there's a lot of things involved in the setup. And if you haven't been through that before, you ought to talk to whoever is the administrator who has access to the window and look at it. I definitely do not recommend that you go in there and play with it. If you go in here and change these settings while you have existing batches, things could go astray. We've had clients who um, had it set to transaction level posting and all of a sudden changed it to batch level posting. There was no batch date in the batch prior to that. All of a sudden, the batch has today's date. It will assume today's date. And all those entries which were set up across five historical periods that they were putting in and getting ready to post just got posted to today. So don't mess with this window if you haven't been trained. It's in setup, posting, posting. But learn about it and know how you are set up. Have somebody show you. If you're not sure, call on us. Anybody at the help desk or any one of us here are very familiar with the window and can help you take ownership of it so that you know how things post. Otherwise, you can end up with some problems. Ed, we've got a question from one of the participants. That can you put this up on the screen for those that are attending remotely? I sent it to them. Everybody who's remote should have received this syllabus from Shane. Um, Larry, can you do me a favor and just go ask Shane if he sent this out, the, uh, the instructions? And Rob, maybe you can tell him. Um, who is it? Evan. Evan Jones. OK. So he should have it in his email if he signed up for the class. Okay. Okay. And if Shane comes back in with we'll staff ask we can resend it to Evan Jones. Uh, or maybe you can just send a little request to Shane to resend it to him. All right. So trying to get back to the subject matter, because we've got a lot of material here. It's integrated right now, and they should be posting through. So how do we find out if all our batches have been posted? If I go to my admin section, and I push down to I'm looking for that section in here for routines. There is a master posting window. And in here, you can see that in payables, I have no open batches. And then in the financial series, I have no open batches. That's good news. That's what I expect to see. Okay? And we're going to put some in there in a moment and see what goes on. So. Everything's been posted through. How would I know if those batches represented today's date or the period that I'm analyzing, which is April of 2017? I would have to go in each batch, look at the edit list, see what the dates are to see. Maybe they're future. Maybe they're recurring batches. Recurring batches should stay. They get posted every month, but they stay. And you'd have to look in the batch to see when it was last posted, what the dates are. But you can see in my system, I've got nothing outstanding. So one and two, post all batches and payables. Um, and one of the reasons that we do that is so that if there's any unapplied credit documents, they can be posted. Sometimes we have credit memos. We want to post them through so that we can analyze those as well. 